getting up every day, doing what I love, so that it doesn't feel like it's work. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Hello, my name is Dre. Uh, I'm from Los Angeles and I am a makeup artist. The best one there is. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Not the best one there is, but pretty close. Just kidding. There's something special about waking up every day, booking your own clients, making your own money, being independent, um, and working really, really, really hard at it. Because it's like you can't blame anybody but yourself. You you work in an environment where I mean you set the standards. Um, and you can be creative and there's nothing like working for yourself and setting your own schedule. I mean, I, I, I wouldn't have it any other way. No other way. I started in makeup when I was a teenager. Well, really, I started playing in makeup when I was a little kid. I would always play around with my mom, my grandma's makeup and mess stuff up, but I had this love for it. And then when I was in high school, a lot of my friends were saying, you know, do our makeup, do our makeup. And I was like, okay. So I did their makeup and it kind of turned into a thing. And then over time, you know, word of mouth, someone still got her makeup done on me, someone still got her makeup done on me. I mean, I wasn't charging. I think back then I was probably charging like $25. That's how, you know. But, um, you know, it, it got to a point where, you know, more people wanted me to do their makeup. And so I, I had to start charging because, you know, obviously I, I was realizing that I was running out of products. So I had to, you know, buy products. Um, and you know, every so often I would up my prices and um, as the demand became greater, you know, my prices increased and so here I am today. I never, ever, 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 ever have second thoughts about pursuing a career in makeup. Um, even if I'm not physically applying makeup on someone in the future, my, my career will always be rooted in cosmetology if you will or in the fashion industry because obviously I have my degree in fashion design so it'll always just be something in the creative field I'm a kinesthetic learner when I was a kid so I'm, I'm, I'm hands-on I'm touchy-feely um, I, I, I love the arts so I will literally always be in the beauty industry um, I do obviously want to own my own I'm saying obviously like y'all know what I want to do but I want to um, you know own my own cosmetic line in the, in the future and um, you know, do more classes and inspiring women, um, you know, in reference to the way that they look and, um, you know, how to keep themselves up, you know, as far as their makeup is concerned, their hair is concerned, their fashion is concerned. So that's kind of what I want to get into, you know, moving forward. So it'll always be beauty though. Where do I find inspiration in myself? No, I'm kidding. Um, huh. Where do I find inspiration? I mean, I, honestly, I get, I get inspiration or I should I say I get inspired by literally anything it's crazy if I go into the fabric store and I see a piece of fabric I'm inspired um, or I'll, and I'll go home and I'm like oh I want to I want to do this color on myself and I want to try it out because obviously with my clients you know I can't do a lot of color because people nowadays are not they're not really into color and glitter and the big lashes and the high fashion looks they're into you know obviously more natural soft glam which I'm fine with doing but on myself when I portray myself online like on my social media accounts I like to you know push the envelope so for me my inspiration can come from a magazine tear you know a, an outfit a fabric like I said um really anything and I'm inspired by other artists too you know I feel like a lot of times artists compare themselves to each other but for me I I I always get inspiration from other artists and their work or things that they're inspired by. So that's pretty much where it comes from. Success for my life would um, resemble getting up every day, doing what I love, so that it doesn't feel like it's work, and um, being respected for it. I don't necessarily have to, you know, have 
100 million followers on Instagram. I don't have to necessarily have fans or whatever else, but I like the respect factor that people know, you know, that they can refer me or, you know, whatever else, because obviously that puts you in, in different circles when, when people are familiar with your work. So that, to me, that's success when you, when you're able to wake up every day, love what you do and get paid for it. I mean, that, I mean, that kind of doesn't get any better than that, you know, because it doesn't feel like it's work when you love it. So that's, that's success to me. So this is how it happens. I'll get an email and it could be any type of email. It could be a celeb client. It could be a network that reaches out. It could be a regular client. And by regular client, I obviously mean someone who's not in the limelight. Um, and they'll email me or they'll text me and they'll just say, you know, are you available tomorrow? Are you available next week? Whatever the date, the date is at this time. And you know, if, I, if I'm available, uh, I have a very, a very hard time getting up in the morning. So I'm always praying that like the, the call time isn't like before 10 a.m. But if it is, you know, I I try to like go to get you know get get good rest the night before, wake up, and uh, I'm usually always at Starbucks to get coffee because I work best when there's caffeine in me. So I get coffee and shout out to Starbucks, woo woo. <laughs> um, and then I pack my kid up. Um, and if it's a client that I'm familiar with that I know, I usually just pack things that I know I just need on them because my kid is huge, it's heavy, and I don't want to carry all that. So if it's a client that I know, I'm familiar with, that I work with often, I uh, pack my kit for them. I'm usually always sanitizing my tools and, you know, getting my brushes clean and things like that. And um, if I don't, if I've never met them before, if I've never worked with them before, I usually go like on their Facebook or maybe Google them and just kind of see what type of looks they're used to. And so I can try to pattern the way that I do their makeup after that. So that's, that's really what my day looks like. And then, you know, obviously I go to set and then, you know, sometimes you're just waiting around, you know, or you're, you know, you get right to it and you have a producer saying, you know, what's your ETA? And I'm like, bro, I just got here. Okay. Just got here. So I don't know. It's fun. It's, it's fun. It's challenging. It's, um, it's rewarding. It's, you know, I love it. I really do love it. Uh, you know, I just love what I do. So that's pretty much what my day looks like. And then I have to eat. Because I'll be hungry. Because <laughs> I'll be hungry. Okay. <laughs> so if you want to be a makeup artist, I get this question a lot. Um, I have a lot of girls that email me, that Snapchat me. Snapchat me that question. Uh, <laughs> but I have like, a lot of girls that, that ask this question. Um, if you are an aspiring artist, I there's a couple things that I that I would say that you need to do. Number one, you absolutely 100% have to invest in yourself. You you should invest in classes, you know, online tutorials. You should invest in your kit, in yourself, the way you look, in your business cards, your website. I have a lot of people that are professional makeup artists that don't even have a website. You have nothing for people to go to. Instagram is not a website. It is great advertisement because it's free and it's everyone's on there. But I feel like it goes beyond that because when Instagram is no longer available for people, when social media is not the thing anymore, it's not popular anymore, you should still have a platform by which it's yours, you know? So having a website, getting business cards, being professional, going out and networking. Um, and then also to never comparing yourself. That is something that is huge in our industry where you go online and you, you know, you look at other artists and you compare yourself. And, you know, I find that you can become so discouraged by other people because you know they have all the clients or they have all this love clients. That's really not what it's about. It's about, like I said before, loving what you do and you know connecting with people who respect what you do, who can propel you into the next phase of your career. Um, I, that's where I get a lot of my business is from other makeup artists who I you know build connections with. So stop comparing yourself. Stop saying, oh, I'm not gonna you know give her a job or I don't want to you know hang out with this crew because we all do the same thing. Thinking that because you guys do the same thing you can't hang out or you can't be in the same crew because they may steal your job. It's not about that. It's about connecting with those people so that you can, you know, build relationships with those people so that essentially you can get clients from those people. So those are my two main things. Just investing in yourself, investing in your business, investing in your kit, trying to at the very least get the best products for your kit. Um, and then and then networking and building your brand. That's I mean, that's huge, huge. So get those classes and get off YouTube and pay for your stuff. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> what I appreciate most about my journey is um, 
like the love that you get and again not on a fan level but more on a just a you know people who really respect what you do but especially the people who've seen where you've come from like a lot of photographers or uh, you know celebs that I work with in the past who have actually been able to see my growth that that's amazing I appreciate the fact that I've been able to last so long in the industry this year marks 10 years in the makeup industry for me so that's huge I mean obviously that means I started when I was what 23 fresh out of college the longevity the um, the the platform that I've been given I'm so blessed and so honored to even do what I do and humbled when someone follows me on Instagram was like hey I follow you on Instagram I mean that's still like so crazy to me but I, it's just a blessing to just be able to like I said before I can't say it enough to get up love what you do be able to do you know do what you love and get paid for it and um, I've come a mighty long way I'm not where I want to be but I'm a long way from where I was so that's always exciting you can Google, uh, let's see, if you Google, like, let's say, Drini Marie, D-R-I-N-I, -I, you would, you get a lot of my social media accounts. Uh, everything is pretty much the same, except for my website. My website is I Dream of Drini, the I is E-Y-E, uh, dot com. And then on Instagram, Tumblr, Facebook, well, I'm sorry, Instagram, it's at Miss Drini, M-I-S-S, -S. Twitter, the same. Uh, Facebook, it's Makeup by Drini. Uh, let's see what else is it? You know, Yelp, makeup by Drini, all that kind of stuff. So, holla at your girl. Let me know what's good. Come get your makeup done and in the hood, and I'm gonna make you look bomb. Uh, <laughs> I was trying to rhyme, but it wasn't working out. Anyways, I'm Drini, and this is Appreciate.